An unexpected surge in demand during the pandemic for all things electronic, as well as cars, has caught chip manufacturers by surprise. The gap between ordering a chip and taking delivery is now 16 weeks. This is well above the previous peak of 14 weeks in 2018. This chip shortage is caused by the increased demand, especially from electronics, including smartphones, tablets, and personal computers. And at the same time, there is, a, there is an increased demand from the auto sector. Now, we do believe that this uh, chip shortage could dissipate itself in the last quarter of this calendar year. But I, will, I wouldn't be surprised that if it could drive on to the next year in, in 2022. PC shipments jumped by 13% in 2020 and are expected to increase by 18% this year, says market intelligence firm IDC. And after falling by 7% in 2020, smartphone shipments are expected to rebound in 2021. In the auto sector, more and more car systems are powered by semiconductors. It's estimated that automotive electronics will make up 45% of a car's manufacturing cost by 2030. So even though demand for vehicles is forecast to grow in 2021 and 2022, the lack of chips to build these more sophisticated cars has forced some car manufacturers to halt production. People are adjusting their business uh, to, you know, uh, counter the situation. If you look at auto auto production, it's very global. So there is, you know, a certain facility that may be slowing down. Maybe it's at the expense of another facility that's actually continuing to produce. And for automaker, when they look at their business, it's, you know, for the global automakers at least, it's, it's global in nature. So reallocating my supply from, you know, one facility to another facility um, is perhaps the, the kind of the logical solution. Uh, given the circumstance. Companies in the auto industry supply chain have also been hit by the global chip shortage. Armstrong Industrial Corporation is a Singapore-based SME dealing with noise, vibration and heat management solutions. Half of the group's 200 million US dollar annual revenue comes from the automotive sector. The chip shortage basically impacts the OEMs like Volkswagen, BMW and Benz. As an indirect impact, the demand or the pool for our products are reduced in tandem because they do not have enough chips to get onto the car to ship out. It's also expecting slower demand for its products compared to last year. The original forecast that we have actually planned for the 2021 budget, it has actually dipped by maybe about 10%, thanks to the chip shortages. For now, Armstrong is taking advantage of any downtime to upskill its workforce and boost productivity. We are actually coinciding our planned shutdown for maintenance and all of this to coincide with the OEMs shut down. So that basically offset like our operating costs. But besides that, due to the slower demand, we are actually also uh, increasing in terms of our training, as well as also our productivity improvement exercise. For the consumer, a delay in car deliveries could mean less bargaining power at the showroom. If the OEM are short of uh, chips, they cannot produce vehicle and deliver to the consumer. So consumer has no car to buy. The impact on resale market is very limited because we are talking about the new generation of vehicles. So young generation are buying smart cars rather than the traditional ones. So the biggest hit is the sector is the smart vehicle sector. If supply is tight, then maybe there are less inventory at the showroom and the dealers, then perhaps it's more difficult to, to get a bargain or it's difficult to, to you know, uh, get a discount. Away from the auto sector, 
analysts say consumers should also expect to pay more for their electronic gadgets. For instance, uh, costs of LCD panels for notebooks and for monitors uh, have been going up about two, three, four, five US dollars uh, a unit. So some of that has been going up. In some cases, we've seen some smaller monitor vendors passing that price on to consumers. Uh, in another sector, in PCs, we've seen some of the, I guess, second tier notebook players suggesting that they might have to increase prices by about five or 10%. Um, and it ultimately comes back to, you know, uh, these guys, in order to secure the components they need, they're fighting with everybody else in the industry right now to get the components they need. So in order to get to that higher position in line, if you will, is basically money. It's saying, look, I'm willing to pay a little more to get that. There could be an increase in the flagship smartphones, which are high-end smartphones, something like an iPhone 12 or uh, Samsung phones. It's in the short term, but I don't think that's going to be the trend in the medium term, given there is a chip shortage and people may not be reluctant to pay slightly higher prices for those, those already expensive phones. As chip manufacturers rush to meet demand, experts say increasing output may not be so easy. There's investments going in to expand capacity. We've already seen TSMC make a lot of those investments. We're seeing Samsung talking about them expanding their capacity. Uh, and of course, Intel has made uh, big discussions about them turning themselves into a foundry as well too in expanding capacity. The challenge of course is Capacity doesn't just expand on a dime, right? It, it takes time to make that investment. 